ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this meeting entitled Brazil from Soccer World Power to Economic World Power. And it's an initiative of Radboud University's Soeterbeek program and international office. And of course, I would like to extend the warmest welcome to the Brazilian ambassador, Mr. Tagago. I hope that I pronounced it not uh, too bad. Your Excellency, uh, dear Mr. Tagago, we are honored that you have accepted our invitation to be our guest this evening and to enlighten us on the state of your country, Brazil. Soccer, samba and carnival, Brazil has been famous for these things for many years. But more recently, the country has also been attracting attention as a vibrant economy. It is one of the so-called BRIC countries, which are well on their way to overtake the, the traditional rich countries. How will Brazil's spectacular economic development affect its society and Brazil's relations with the rest of the world? Please allow me, as rector of this university, to tell you something about our university and about the Radboud Ambassador Lectures series, in which you have so kindly agreed to participate. Radboud University is a quite young university that, in the 91 years of its existence, has succeeded in acquiring a firm position among the best research universities in Europe. Our objective is to challenge our students to actively participate in the academic community and to train them to become critical and committed academics. We have a keen eye on the social impact and relevance of our research and degree programs. The Radboud Ambassador Lecture Series is part of the endeavor to tighten the links between academia and society. We strongly believe that our academic community, both staff and students, needs to be informed of what is going on in the world in the best possible way. This information will not only help us to improve our academic work, but also increase our contribution to society. Ten years ago, I was fortunate enough to travel to Brazil, to Rio to be exact, and I was really impressed by the people, the culture and the enormous opportunities in this magnificent city. I remember it took a while to travel back to Nijmegen, but according to Vox, our university's magazine, Brazil is not really far away. Several prominent scholars of this university have dealings with Brazil. You can read all about it in the most recent issue of Vox ma magazine, but unfortunately it's in Dutch. Nevertheless, this copy will be yours. Brazil is a land of opportunities, and I'm quite sure that Brazilians impact factor on the world to stick to, stick to scientific discourse will certainly increase further in the years to come. And from the 12th of June, it will definitely rise sky high when Brazil and Croatia kick off the World Soccer Championship in Sao Paulo. Following your lecture, you will discuss the current state of affairs in Brazil with Paul Bakker, professor of medieval and Renaissance philosophy at our university and with the audience. But first we look, but, but first we look forward to hearing your views on the present and future of Brazil. And before giving you the floor, I will offer you this Vox magazine, as well as an umbrella, because you told me that your first experience in the Netherlands was rain, rain, rain. <laughs> and 
this umbrella will help you to find your way when you are next time in name okay. <laughs> It's the map of our past. Guten Abend. And this is as far as I can go in, in Dutch. <laughs> uh, Professor Kortman, thank you for your kind words. Professor Paul Baker, um, Van Vucht, um, very happy to be here at the uh, University of Nijmegen. Um, I'm going to uh, speak about um, the Brazil, um, give you an idea of our political setting of, uh, of Brazil, the, um, the economy, a little bit about the economy and the social development achieved, and the foreign policy of Brazil, which is being an ambassador, as you, you'll understand, that this is my specialization. Uh, and after that, I understand that we'll have an exchange of questions and answers. I'll be most happy to answer any questions you want to put to me. Well, on political setting, um, as we, ha we have come to the 21st century, one might say that Brazil has found at long last a secure and solid path to grow as a democratic country. It has been a long learning process since independence in 1822. For nearly two centuries, the political institutions were by and large fragile, subject to internal and external pressures, and unable to provide a stable direction to the country. Among the many reasons for the political as well as economic vulnerability, I would highlight the later abolition of slavery, only in 1888, governments ruled by oligarchies, excessive control by the military of the body politics, rapid and somewhat chaotic urbanization, weakened political parties, populist tendencies, low level of development, economic instabilities, and mismanagements. Also, some external factors have had a bearing on Brazil political evolution, such as, for instance, the economic constraints imposed by the European powers in the 19th century and the first half of the 20th centuries. The East and West rivals also, economic trade and technological impediments. Though Brazil was able to grapple with many of those factors, some are still at play today, the political institutions have gradually matured. In a way, they are now able to provide solutions to the problems affecting the country's governance without impairing its democracy. The political apparatus is now better equipped to deal with instabilities derived from domestic, such as corruption, and external factors. More concretely, the federal constitution promulgated in 1988 provides the legal and institutional framework to address the eventuality of political crises. Its main test was the removal from power of President Collor de Mello in 1992. The process of impeachment was carried out according to the Constitution and without any danger to internal peace. The uncertainties surrounding such a major political event were not used by opportunist politicians to promote a military coup, as it often happened in the past. Another important feature in Brazil's modern political scenery is the emergency of the Workers' Party, or the PT, as it's well known in Brazil, in the early 80s. As a grassroots party, 
essentially urban, anchored in the trade unions and in the Catholic Church, the PT soon proved to be a viable alternative to the supremacy of the traditional parties, which have been mostly patronized by rural oligarchies and conservative industrialists. With the PT and numerous small parties created in the aftermath of the demise of the dictatorship in mid-80s, the political forces in Brazil have become more representative of the variety of interests brought about by and large by a growing middle class. So Brazil's modern achieve political achievements show stability with ample freedom of expression and participation. The successful experience of six general elections since the enactment of the new constitution has attested to the political maturity attained and the consolidation of democracy and the rule of law. So how is today's Brazil government? President Dilma Rousseff of the Workers' Party, in power since January 2011, was elected with 56% of the almost 100 million votes cast. Most probably, she will run for re-election in October of the present year. She would be favored to win the contest as she enjoys an approval rate of around 40%, even after the eruption of street demonstrations last year. The president is supported by a coalition of some 16 parties, mostly from the center and the left. However, Brazil's political configuration is noted less by ideological allegiances than by pragmatism and regional or special interests. On balance, in nearly three and a half years in office, President Rousseff has obtained relative success. Major laws have been approved, like the new forestry code, the share of royalties of the offshore oil production, the internet civil law, the law on corruption, among others. The coalition parties have helped pass these important pieces of legislation. They continue to enjoy strong popular support as shown by their performance in the midterm municipal elections in 2012. The president has succeeded in keeping the coalition united and a firm grip of public affairs despite having it to dismiss a number of ministers suspected of corruption and to face the condemnation of former heads of the PT by the Supreme Court. Given the freedom of press, the government has been in the spotlight and has its decisions and actions constantly scrutinized by a proactive media. It has embarked on programs that aim to reduce long-standing gross inequalities existing in the Brazilian society by targeting the eradication of extreme poverty. The huge income gap is deemed to be at the root of the urban insecurity and political unrest, besides constituting a drain in public services and an obstacle to development. A high rate of urban criminality continues to defy Brazil's capacity to provide social justice for all. However, Major and novel experiences that combine reinforced police, police action with provision of public and social services are being put into practice with positive results in a number of slum areas in, of major urban centers. Now turning to the economy, the origins of Brazil's most recent cycle of economic growth can be traced back to the liberalizing reforms of the 90s and to the introduction of the Plano Real in 1994, which put an end to a hyperinflation. Brazil's economic fundamentals have since significantly improved with the adoption of a floating exchange rate, an inflation targeting system, and primary fiscal surpluses necessary to the solvency of the public debt. 
These have been the three pillars of a macroeconomic policy that accounts for the stability enjoyed by the country over the last decade. Presidents Lula and Rousseff adapted them to allow for more counter-cyclical measures in order to continue to grow during the global recession. The country has been noted to have achieved remarkable success in the implementation of social inclusion policies. These have led to greater access to education, real increases in wages, greater access to credit by consumers, universal access to health services, universal coverage of social security benefits. In addition, the government set in motion an ambitious program of conditional cash transfers like the Bolsa Familia, aiming at the, those at the bottom of the income pyramid. By halving the number of people living on less than $1 a day and attaining two-thirds reduction in child mortality, Brazil has already achieved the first and fourth of the UN Millennium Development Goals well before 2015. It has also succeeded in lifting around 40 million people out of poverty, a contingent of new consumers which has contributed to the economic growth in the last decade. On employment and income, and aware of the role played by the labor market in promoting upward social mobility, Brazil has succeeded in reducing unemployment rate to an average of 5% throughout uh, recent years, with the creation of approximately 1.2 million formal jobs just last year. However, as the consumer-led growth has reached the limit, the continuation of this successful trajectory will require new policies designed especially to improve the productivity of the economy and to develop an infrastructure able to meet the ever-increasing demand. Many years of fiscal constraints necessary to reduce public debt and balance the accounts have led to underinvestment in ports, airports, roads, energy. The strategy followed since the inception of the Lula's go uh, government have been to combine the use of private and public investments to better key sectors of the infrastructure and tackle deep-seated social shortcomings. As a result, only in the past four years, those investments in housing, energy, water and sanitation, urban development, transport, have attained over 350 billion euros. Investment plans to modernize the country's infrastructure have also gained traction by the hosting of major sport events, such as the FIFA World Cup and the Olympics in 2016. And here, I would like to give some figures about the real expenditures incurred by Brazil with the World Cup, vis-a-vis -vis spending done with education and health. For the event, 12 stadiums have been either built or refurbished. Overall, around 2.7 billion euros were spent, of which 1.3 billion originated from the National Development Bank as loans, so as they should be repaid. In infrastructure works in the cities that will host the football games, the government has destined some 6 billion euros to improve airports, mass transit systems, telecommunications. Since Brazil started preparing for the World Cup, the government has spent some 8.5 billion dollars in state uh, billion euros in stadiums and related works, while over the past 10 years it has invested more than 275 billion euros in education and health. On foreign trade, the current level of Brazilian foreign trade is some 340 billion euros. Foreign trade accounts for around 20% of the GDP. Exports totaled 240 billion, whereas imports $240 billion in 2013. While imports increased 
6.5%, exports decreased about 1%. The growth of Brazilian exports has suffered mainly from low export prices for commodities, as well as from a slow recovery of the world economy. But Brazil's foreign trade is quite diversified, as the top 10 trading partners take only 55% of the total trade. China has become Brazil's main trading partner, with 16% of the two-way trade, followed by the United States. Bilateral trade with Netherlands, by the way, accounts for about 2% of Brazil's foreign trade. Nevertheless, Netherlands is the Brazil's fifth largest trading partner, following China, USA, Germany, and Argentina. On foreign policy, since the early days of Brazil as an independent country, its foreign policy has been ancillary to achieve the consolidation of the country's borders, increased political and economic cooperation with neighboring countries, strengthening of international development cooperation, enhancement of the primacy of international law and of multilateralism, promotion of the respect, and res of the respect of human rights, disarmament, peaceful settlement of disputes, South-South cooperation. Instrumental to attain such goals has been an active participation in major multilateral and regional institutions. Brazil is a founding member of the United Nations, the Bretton Woods institutions, the GATT WTO, the ILO, and many other multilateral institutions. It has also helped create the Group of 77 of developing countries. The country continues to vigorously support a reform of international governance as to allow for increased participation of emerging countries in the main decision-making bodies like the United Nations Security Council, the IMF, and the World Bank. Brazil believes that it can make a relevant contribution to the solution of the conflicts affecting many parts of the world, as well as the, of the major structural impediments in the world economy. In Latin America, my country has actively promoted cooperation. It helped create the Latin American Integration Association and together with Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, it founded in 1991 the Mercosur, a customs union that today also includes Venezuela. The diplomatic efforts to pursue enhanced integration of South America are also anchored on developing concrete projects in infrastructure, in particular in such as areas as energy, communications, transport, and logistics, as well as on expanded economic and trade ties. The integration projects tap the economic potential of the new areas for development in the country's hinterland and along the borders. To undertake these projects, foreign investments are most welcome. So where does Brazil's foreign policy stand today? In general terms, the profile of the Brazilian foreign policy has risen to the point where one could venture to say it has achieved the status of a soft power, especially when one considers its ability to influence others. This can be attributed to some factors which I'll try to explain. Brazil has shown increased capacity to help shape the outcome of major negotiations or to influence in their direction, such as those that take place at the WTO, the UN system, the G20, or on environment, among others. By fostering the setting up of inter and intra-regional mechanisms, the country is opening new avenues to augment its presence where it was barely felt a few decades ago. Also, the country has succeeded in raising its economic standing. Today, it is the sixth largest world economy. It's the world's number one producer of ex and exporter of various commodities. It has a rather diversified economy, an industrial base, and is becoming a major energy producer. These economic assets have drawn the attention of the world business centers 
and made Brazil the fourth largest recipient of foreign direct investment last year after USA, China, and the UK. Since 2011, the country has received foreign investments of around 45 billion euros per year on average. The country has achieved some success in addressing its intractable problems of income inequality, poor social indicators, and political instability. The progress made in these sensitive areas has enhanced Brazil's international profile, and as a consequence, it has improved its world political standing and its prospects for sustained economic growth. Brazil's influence can also be attributed to its capacity to articulate positions in various international negotiations. In the WTO Doha round, its leadership has been key to create a third force in the negotiations on agriculture. It has also helped to strengthen the hand of the developing countries in withstanding the pressures for an unbalanced <laughs> results in many other sectors under negotiations, such as tariffs and services. Likewise, on environment, Brazil has been a key player in fashioning the outcomes of the negotiations on climate change. It has also been instrumental in the drafting of a cons consensus document on sustainable development adopted, adopted at the Rio Plus 20 conference in 2012. <coughs> at that event, governments, civil society and private sector agreed a plan that commits all with the eradication of poverty as an imperative element of sustainable development. <coughs> More recently, Brazil convened a conference on the future of internet, internet global governance, which produced an important blueprint to guide international discussions on the topic, as well as the drafting of national laws. As a multilateralist, Brazil believes that only through the strengthening of multilateral institutions it would be able to better advance its interests. That is why it has actively promoted the setting of international rules on environment, trade, law of the sea, disarmament, human rights, among others. Moreover, it is persuaded that only multilateral actions can more adequately ensure international peace and security, as well as provide legitimacy and efficacy to conflict resolution. Brazil's positions in international forums in general seek to combine the preservation of the norms and institutions with a revision of some of their features. Such stance aims at better reflecting the interests of new important actors in the field. It is the case, for instance, of the reform of the Security Council, where Brazil, together with Germany, Japan and India, advocates the inclusion of new permanent members. Such a position is supported by the majority of UN membership, including the Netherlands, which we very much appreciate. In other institutions of universal composition, like the IMF and the WTO, Brazil has taken positions that, while not tinkering with the govern, uh, governing rules, support the incorporation of themes or approaches that cater to its interests and to those of the developing countries. However, where it has arguably made bolder movements is in the context of South-South and regional cooperation. My country has championed, for instance, the strengthening of intra- and inter-regional ties in the developing world. It has taken concrete steps to foster, foster closer economic and political relations with South American countries, with the creation of uh, UNASUR, and Latin American and Caribbean countries with the creation of CELAC. Also, between South America and Africa and Arab countries, respectively, by means of specific summits. It has also developed a more aggressive diplomacy by generating new regional arrangements like the IBSA with South Africa and India, the BRICS 
with uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and the basics with, with uh, China, South Africa, and India. In all of these new forums, it has made a point to underpin its participation by the principles of respect of, to international law, human rights, democracy, solidarity, peaceful settlement of disputes. In addition to the expansion of its diplomatic missions in Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean, it has made a termed option to be a player in other areas of the, plan of the planet where previously had been, at best, a distant partner. In conclusion, one can say that there has been a continuity in the goals pursued by Brazil's external relations with few deviations. I also think that Brazil, emboldened by a growing economy and a less unequal society, has managed to make its voice heard in all global and regional forums. While it seeks to render them more responsive to its national interests, my country believes that international institutions and the rule of law will be strengthened as there is an increased participation of and greater responsibilities shared by new actors from the developing world. Thank you very much for your attention. Good evening. I have a great pleasure to, to be here with the Brazilian ambassador. And uh, I have to say that uh, I learned a lot about Brazil now with his lecture. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you a lot. I'm going to sing one song which is considered to be the song of Brazil, which was recorded by many composers and it's kind of a uh, worldwide known. It's called Aquarela do Brasil. And it was composed by a great composer from Brazil called Ari Barroso. Brasil, meu Brasil brasileiro, meu mulato isoneiro, vou cantar-te nos meus versos. Ó oh, Brasil, samba que dá Bamboleio que faz gingar Ó oh, Brasil, do meu amor Terra de nosso Senhor Brasil, pra mim Brasil, Brasil Terra boa e gostosa da morena ancestrosa De um olhar indiferente Ó oh, Brasil, samba que dá Bamboleio que faz ginga Ó oh, Brasil, do meu amor Terra de nosso Senhor Brasil, pra mim Estas fontes murmurantes Onde eu mato a minha sede E onde a lua vem pousar Brasil, pra mim Ah, esse coqueiro que dá cor Onde eu amarro a minha rede E onde a lua vem pousar Ah, esse Brasil lindo e trigueiro É o meu Brasil brasileiro Terra de samba e pandeiro Brasil, pra mim, Brasil, pra mim, Brasil, pra mim.
Obrigado. Muito obrigado.